specific for anybody specific for I did it last time you didn't okay oh yeah oh, that was good was that too. Last? yeah that was last Five fifteen. Time for our regular scheduled meeting. As always, we first start our, start off with pledge of allegiance. I think I'll ask um, Rob Jabberman to lead us because he only has one month left with us with the oh, city. Dude. Rob, will you do that for us, please? <clears throat> he was a little shocked when I. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Uh, roll call. We have everybody here. Hey, that's great. Great news. Um, first thing is a citizen comments. It's a period to provide the opportunity for members of the public to address this council on any matter, including items on the agenda. Um, for anyone wishing to address the council, please step up to the microphone, give your name and mailing address, and state the matter of your interests. Uh, we will limit to three minutes, I think, Doug? Yes, sir. Doug and I went to high school together. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Doug. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I'll come over to the microphone here. I was going to open one item. Sorry. Uh, Douglas Miller, P.O. Box 605, Rock Island. But I'm a resident of the city of Wenatchee. For purposes of mailing, it's a P.O. box. Uh, <clears throat> back in 2006, uh, I was elected and served as you are today as a member of the City Council. Continued that through 2012. Those were some of the early days of the creation of the Public Facilities District. And the ultimate uh, culmination of that, of course, was the construction of what you know as the Town Toyota Center, and the PFD operates that today. Um, I attended their board meeting earlier today with a couple specific concerns. I wanted also to share those with you tonight uh, because it exists only because the city of Wenatchee back then <coughs> created an agreement by which the city would take on certain debts and um, help finance the construction of that. As you're probably aware with a little bit of history or Wikipedia search, uh, things went wrong, really wrong. And the city of Wenatchee found itself in a position of not being able to um, take care of some of that debt and ultimately we were in court um, with a decision by the state supreme court that the city had exceeded its debt capacity fast forward 2012 the voters were asked to step forward and please support an issue of a sales tax increase regionally to help retire the original debt and take care of things going forward they did 63 percent or thereabouts so the board does receive um, reimbursements, if you will, for debts that they have since uh, that time issued, long-term bonds and so forth. I believe some of those are going to retire um, as late as 2042, uh, or 60th class reunion, should we be around for that, <laughs> at one edgy high school. A long time from now. In the meantime, uh, the board meets routinely and approves and takes care of business down there and uh, one of the things that came to my attention is how that original agreement was worded and the authority that you have as a city to enforce the agreement. The most recent amended agreement is dated in 2021 and signed by the mayor, and it's a part of your public record here. I would encourage you as a council to look at that agreement and make sure that the terms are being met and that the debts are being addressed and that no other expenses or unnecessary, uh, shall we say, projects are being brought to that board for approval and funding 
beyond uh, taking care of the facility, its debts, its long-term capital improvement needs, its payroll, and so forth. <coughs> Having said that, I also noted today on the agenda that there were a couple of um, vouchers, I shouldn't say vouchers, a couple of months of vouchers that were slated for approval and the, was not completed, perhaps because the vouchers weren't available. Um, so as a secondary concern, I'm wondering how they pay their bills if the board isn't approving the vouchers on a regular basis. Thank you. Yeah. What's that? Did he hit? Oh, no. you good, Doug? You want 30 more seconds or so? I really don't have anything to add. I appreciate everyone's time tonight. Listening to my concern, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to take a look at that. And I know, and I'm just going to comment because it was brought up by Mayor Crawford, uh, and I discuss it prior, but we also are looking at the policy changes of how that would affect us and what we need to look at for our future. So thanks for bring, addressing that to the board uh, today. Um, Doug, I appreciate that. All right. Anybody else? Uh, we have a few other people like to come up for three minutes, talk about anything they'd like to address to the council. Seeing none. We'll go on to our consent items. Your Honor, I'll make a motion to approve agenda vouchers and minutes from previous meetings. <clears throat> also a motion to approve resolution number 2024-16, appointing Richard Upton as a voting member to the code enforcement board. <clears throat> board, excuse me. Motion to approve Re resolution 2024-17, designating three city council members as voting representatives on behalf of the city of Wenatchee at the Association of Washington Cities annual business meeting conference for 2024. Second. We have a motion by council member Hornby and second by council member Rodenstein. Uh, to approve agenda vouchers and minutes from previous me meeting. Also to approve resolution number 2024-16, appointing Richard Upton as a voting member to the Code Enforcement Board. And motion to approve resolution number 2024-17, designating three city council members as voting representatives on behalf of the City of Wenatchee at the Association of Washington City's annual business meeting conference for 2024. Any comments or discussion? Comment. I, I will say I met with the Richard Upton, and I'm not sure if you guys saw her thing, but he used to be a, a, a mayor a few years ago uh, in, a, in a different uh, state and, and moved here with his wife a few years ago. So I got a chance to meet with him for like a half hour, so you guys know. Um, who are the three representatives? I'm just going to throw that out there before we vote. Beg your pardon? Who are the three representatives that are going? I'm going. Charlie's going. I don't know who else is going. Oh. oh, we can add one more. Okay. Me too. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Just curious. Space now. Any other comments or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. We have a proclamation, Memorial Day proclamation. Does somebody have that? I have it. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Proclamation. Since the inception of our country by the establishment of the United States Constitution, it has on occasion been necessary to protect the concepts of the Constitution and whereas at times it became necessary to resort to armed conflict to protect these concepts, which gave each citizen of the United States certain inalienable rights. And whereas citizens of our great country have given of their lives in the protection of these unalienable rights, and whereas each year we set aside one day to which we can revive the memory of those who have sacrificed and those who have passed on. Now, therefore, I, Mike Poyer, mayor of the city of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim May 27th, 2024 as Memorial Day in the city of Wenatchee, and I urge all citizens to join us in honoring their memory. In witness whereof, I have caused the seal of the city of Wenatchee to be affixed on this 23rd day of May, 2024, Mike Poyer, Mayor. Do we have somebody here to accept the proclamation? I'm not sure if we do. Okay. 
So, and that proclamation will be read at the cemetery on Monday, so everybody knows also. So, let's have some fun. <clears throat> Commissioner <laughs> Allen, please come up and uh, talk to us. Thank Tell you us what you're doing. What am I here for? Mike, I'm here for you. <laughs> because I know you're excited about this project. We've had the good uh, fortune to meet a couple times. Um, good evening. Thank you all for letting me be here tonight to share with you more about this wonderful joint project that we've been moving forward on. To give you a little bit of a background on myself, I have sat in your seat, not here, but in Chelan as a former council member, and I um, am in my second year, so a new, newly elected PUD commissioner serving an at-large position. And it is with great honor that I'm here to share with you a brief introduction about, or tell you a little bit more about the project that we have going and to hopefully celebrate where we are in it now. So to give you a little bit of background, am I driving this? Yes. Okay. I don't know where my, okay, there we go. Ooh, I'm going sure. fast, Would going you, fast. Would you like me to drive? Would that help you? Sure. Okay. Um, so, the City of Wenatchee and Chelan PUD cooperatively developed the Riverfront Park Master Plan in 2021, which includes three distinct phases. The Master Plan was formally approved by the Wenatchee City Council on January 13, 2022. Extensive public outreach occurred in 2021 and 2022, and the community responded by providing hundreds of comments that shaped design of the master plan and the first phase, which we're seeing up here. Our project goals um, included to develop a sense of place and identity for riv Riverfront Park, seamlessly integrate existing and proposed park elements, create elements of consistency and elements of distinction, clearly articulate site circulation and wayfinding, provide visual and physical access to the river, locate ideal spaces for active and passive recreation, design spaces and activities for a wide range of users. And over the last two years, detailed design of the first phase was completed and a contract was recently awarded for construction. The city's financial commitment to the project is $2 million, and the Chelan Douglas Regional Port provided funding and support for environmental analysis and related design work. The PUD is providing the balance of the funding, which is approximately $9.7 million. Riverfront Park encompasses around 31 acres, and most of the land in the park is owned by the city of Wenatchee and has been leased to Schland PUD since 1983 to support park development consistent with the district's federal license for the Rock Island project. Um, the project, as we go further, the trail, where is that trail? Go back up to the trail. There we go. There we go. The trail will be split in several areas to allow separate safe spaces for all forms of allowed recreation. Other areas will see widened trails. These improvements will enhance trail use and safety and address many public comments received during the outreach. The Wenatchee Riverfront Railway will remain and an Apple-themed children's play area and bathroom will be constructed near the railroad, railway depot. The plaza area will see substantial improvements that will make this an even more inviting gathering space. And I know this is what Mayor um, is most happy about, which is the new splash pad with a Columbia River steamboat theme that will be added to the area at the end of the 5th Street, directly south of the existing bathroom. The PUD has heard many visitors already asking for this popular new feature. Additional picnic seating and a new picnic shelter also are planned. And part of the trail along Riverside 9 apartments will be leveled and widened for speed control and safety. Access to the river in this location will also be improved. Some public art will be relocated to other sections of the park to fit within the new improvements, but all existing art will remain on site once construction is complete. At Walla Walla Point Park, the PUD will add a new full court basketball feature, line for tournament play to replace the previous courts located in the tennis and pickleball area. The pop popular North End parking lot will be fortified, restored, and resurfaced with asphalt. 
Construction is anticipated to begin in June, so right around the corner, and is expected to wrap up in spring of 2025. The construction is being planned to minimize disruption, creating detours and short phases when needed to limit the impact to trail and park visitors. And so very much would like to thank uh, Mayor and all of you council members. Also uh, former Mayor Frank Kuntz, special thanks to city staff and to Dave Erickson, the parks director, and also to you. Do I call you Miss Gloria? Miss Gloria? <laughs> <laughs> Laura. <laughs> so we appreciate this wonderful partnership and know that this is going to be a pride, of the, pride for us as well as we hope for you. Um, any questions or comments on the project? Well, well, it should be, you know, this originally was supposed to be like um, financially shared equally. And you guys saw a, a bigger vision and, and helped. Um, and thank you for coming to the table and just doing it all. And, and it's, it's just so impressive that you're doing this. And you're right. I got three grandchildren and I dream I was a little kid and I, I get to watch them uh, to play in this organization. But it's just an unbelievable thing that you're, you're I can't tell you how impressed um, and proud that you, you guys can do this and, and do this for us. So I just thank you and all the commissioners to come through with this. You are so welcome. You know, it's amazing when we have communities that are thinking ahead for legacy and leaving these parks and the green spaces. There are so many communities that haven't taken the time or spent the money and, and having that green space available is important not only for us today, but for our future. So for this commissioner, I am incredibly excited to have your partnership and to see your vision as well come through with our wonderful staff. You know, we all know that the PUD staff really has um, spearheaded much of this with your efforts. So thank you. It's, no, it's mostly you guys. It's okay. It, we're, we're all transparent. It's mostly you guys. And, and, and it really, take the credit where it deserves. It's you guys. Thank yeah. you, Justin. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments for Commissioner? Okay. <clears throat> Made my week. Thank you, guys, thank you. very much. Uh, we'll go on to our action <clears throat> items. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Dave Erickson, Parks and Recreation Director for the City. Uh, a little quick note, Justin and Kelly ran off, but uh, yeah, construction is, gonna is scheduled to start June 4th. Down there, we had a pre-construction meeting earlier this week. Uh, of note, the for us anyway, the art that's down there uh, at the end of the pedestrian bridge, that's scheduled to come out, assuming the schedules hold, come out uh, June 20th through 25th and be relocated to the PSC during construction. And if the schedule holds for construction, it would be going back different. We're shuffling the deck a bit and it's going back uh, at the end of August. So August 20th or so. So it should be just out of the park for a couple of months while um, construction's happening. But that's not why I'm here tonight. Um, this evening, so I'm requesting acceptance of a Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation grant. Last September, we applied for a, a little over $20,000 grant from the Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation to do an information sign kiosk and, and um, section markers in the cemetery. And it's really a customer service item. So. Um, the kiosk itself will have spots for brochures, so if staff isn't around, people can get information about the cemetery. Kind of the cooler thing is it'll have a, a, a like a shopping mall, you are here type sign with the cemetery rules, the hours, all that good stuff, as well as a map and a QR code that'll link to our city website, which has a find a grave type function. So if you're looking for Aunt Edna or somebody, you can type in that name and it'll take you and show you where that grave is within the cemetery. So. Um, we're requesting uh, acceptance of that this evening, and with any luck, we would have this project done, depending on procurement processes, by the end of summer. Uh, there's no match required. There's a little bit of match included in this, and that's just basically staff time to get the project done. Dave, I just want to say this is a great project, and I'm so excited you're doing it. And I'll give you a good example of why we need something like this. For years, I was searching for my great-grandparents' graves in the Tahoma Cemetery in Yakima. 
I never found them. My brother finally did. But this is going to be so beneficial to those people who are looking for their loved one's buried, burial spot. Yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. I know our staff wanted to have an electronic kiosk up there so you could just, you know, go on. But the maintenance and the installation cost and the vandalism possibilities, this is just a safer way to go. It's awesome. And with that, Your Honor, I will move for City Council to authorize the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services Director to sign a grant agreement with the State of Washington Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation, DAHP, for cemetery sign project. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Harold and second by Council Member Huffaker. Correct? Yes. Thank you. For the City Council to authorize the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services Director to sign a grant agreement with the State of Washington Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation, DAHP, for the cemetery sign project. Any discussion or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Great. Thank you. Hey, thanks, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. <coughs> Mr. Lewin. Good evening, Council. Uh, Jake Lewin, City Engineer here. Um, my first item uh, bringing is a request for uh, asking City Council to authorize, uh, or sorry, amend our project budget for Confluence Parkway South and authorize um, the amendment number one to our task order um, for design build services. So on the screen here, I have uh, the progressive design build model that sort of outlays the steps of per, um, completing a project under this delivery method. Uh, we're currently under phase 1A, the validation phase. Um, and then you can see their contract amendment right at the end of that uh, that would go advance us into the next phase. That's where we're at, so this amendment is Kind of a planned step um, this would allow the or authorize the design builder to advance the design and development of the project um, to approximately about a 60 percent design level at which point later this year we will negotiate a maximum price for them to complete the design and construct the project um, that's that work is in or, sorry that that stage would be expected somewhere in the october to november frame um, the work till till now again is validation so um, getting them to understand the scope, the schedule, all the constraints and complexities and requirements of the project. And then they have put together sort of their level of effort to advance the design and provide <coughs> us a schedule that allows us to deliver the project within our grant schedule. And so um, with that, I answer any questions about the amendment or the project that you guys might have. Check that arrow that comes down from that B section there to where it says GMP early work what, what is that uh, signifying yeah so that might look like uh, as we advance the project this summer we know for for instance uh, we have some the city has some uh, utilities that are in BNSF's right-of-way uh, we might advance to relocate those and advance this like later this year in nice. preparation for that railroad work there might be items on the job that are long lead procurement that we've been dealing with all signal poles, light poles. We could put together a package uh, to that. agree on a price for them to go ahead and make those orders um, as we advance the design on certain known elements to kind of look for opportunities to accelerate our schedule. Gotcha. So, Thanks. Great idea. And one thing about the budget amendment I should mention, it's not changing the total price. It was just making a small change. I did bring that to finance committee to... Um, increase the amount of preliminary engineering. My earlier estimates um, didn't have our GMP phase happening so later in the year, so really it's just moving a little bit more design work in the PE phase as opposed to the construction phase. So, I'll make a motion for the City Council to amend the project budget and authorize the City Administrator to execute Amendment Number 1 to Task Order CP South with Kramer Scarcella Brothers Joint Venture for the Confluence Parkway South Project, project number 2201.1. Second. 
have a motion by Councilmember Atkinson and second by Councilmember Hornby for City Council to amend the project budget and authorize the City Administrator to execute amendment number one to task order CP South with Kramer Scarcilla Brothers joint venture for the Confluence Parkway South project, project number 2201.1. Comments or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Do you have the next one also? Yes, so I'm oh. taking over the next uh, item here that okay. uh, our project engineer, Nicole Brockwell, um, was scheduled to bring here. This is for, uh, we have a planned project on 9th Street. Um, actually, what I should like to start with is just remind everyone what that looks like today. So 9th Street, um, going down to the waterfront, you can see the sidewalks. This is uh, just west of the track, so sidewalk ends. The road kind of narrows up there. Um, so the city was awarded uh, $1.3 million in federal funds to do some safety improvements at this crossing, which would include um, extending the ped facilities across the, the sidewalks, putting some median uh, treatments in, and then uh, replacing uh, or sort of enhancing the rail, the, the arms, the gates there. So it'll look similar to what is at Arondo Street. Um, and so the item, I'll just pull it sort of the, um, the design there. So we've advanced the design uh, and the right of way, purchased the right of way. Uh, this, the item that I'm bringing uh, to council tonight is requesting authorization for the city administrator to execute the construction and maintenance agreement between the city and BNSF. So this agreement uh, really covers where the city is gonna use these federal funds to pay for the installation of all this. The CNM agreement covers the maintenance responsibilities of all the equipment. And so essentially the city will be maintaining the sidewalks, the road improvements. Uh, BNSF will be responsible for the maintenance of the rail safety equipment that's there. And so that was negotiated as part of the CNM agreement. Uh, the next steps was once we authorized this would BNSF would complete their design, order those materials and install that safety equipment and then we could advance to construct the rest of the project. It, this funding was January 2018? Wait. That's, yeah. So we, we were okay. awarded in 2018. Oh, okay. Design and right of way went through 2020, 21. Okay. Uh, and then there was a lengthy period there for negotiation of the CNM agreement. But um, I think. Lit litigation. Actually. Litigation, yeah. which the response was. There's, there's an attorney for you. <laughs> <laughs> And the result is that uh, really the maintenance agree uh, responsibilities are and were found to be within, you know, BNSF maintaining their equipment and us maintaining the road and sidewalks. So it's within state and federal law. So it worked out good for us. It was good for us. It was, it was good to finally get it behind us. And so now we're trying to advance this and get it done for, I mean, you guys saw the, I think the, the existing condition and this is some much needed improvements for this crossing. Well, Your Honor, I'll make a motion for the City Council to authorize the City Administrator to execute the construction and maintenance agreement between the City of Wenatchee and Burlington Northern Santa Fe for railroad crossing improvements to be constructed as part of the 9th Street Rail Crossing Project, City Project Number 1801. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Huffaker and second by Councilmember Cuevas for City Council to authorize the City Administrator to execute the construction and maintenance agreement between the City of Wenatchee and Burlington Northern Santa Fe for railroad crossing improvements to be constructed as part of the 9th Street Rail Crossing Project, City Project Number 1801. Any discussion or comments? Just glad you guys uh, fought so that we didn't have to do the maintenance on their equipment. And I also think this is going to be a great improvement to that intersection because I see a lot of people trying to figure out the best way through there and it's it's not a safe situation now, so this is going to be great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Community Development Director, Mr. DeVries. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Let me see, which one is this one? Change orders, okay. 
So if you recall, and I'll get by the microphone here. If you recall, last year uh, the council approved a contract with Pipkin for the construction site construction for the placement of the pallet shelters units at um, the Wenatchee Rescue Mission. That work is almost complete. It looks great, uh, but there have been surprises along the way, unfortunately. Uh, we had uh, removal of undocumented fill, uh, some interesting surprises uh, there, a fence relocation to accommodate PUD uh, easement and power pole relocation, um, some additional light poles and a safety guardrail. Uh, we were able to accommodate that within uh, the budget authority we had. However, um, we're at a point now we have some remaining uh, work order items that do need uh, your approval. And that is specifically for um, shower, restroom, trailer weatherization, um, also power to the shower facility. Originally they thought that the power at the rescue mission itself would be sufficient. It's not, so they have to trench and extend a line from the road uh, to that. And that's the biggest, uh, biggest ticket item. And then the design of the, um, uh, the ADA <coughs> ramp system for the four ADA units uh, isn't working as planned and so that has to be redesigned and, and built as well. Um, so the total costs on how that works out, we have a good number on the weatherization, uh, that would be about $2,732.80. The ADA ramp system, we just had a meeting uh, this week on that redesign. Uh, we don't think it will uh, cost as much, but the initial idea our consultant had was 23000 We hope that it will be half that amount. The uh, trenching and electrical service to the shower and restroom trailer was about $42,052. Uh, and then we're asking for a contingency of 15000 hoping we don't need it, um, but would really prefer not to have to come back if we do need it. Um, so the total request is $82,784.80 uh, for that uh, last change order. But really that's, um, aside from the pump facility, that's the last change order component for Pipkin uh, that we would have to wrap up those site improvements. Um, and so we would recommend that you would allow uh, the authorization for the city administrator to sign uh, that last change order and happy to answer any questions you might have. Now, Glenn, this is the money for the city of East Wenatchee also, is that correct? Correct. So it's uh, the combined tax fund. So none of these are through the general fund. These are all through the uh, tax dollars. And we do have the funding capacity in the capital budget dedicated uh, for this work. Uh, but the contract um, exceeds the authority for the city administrator and myself to authorize this remaining uh, change order. Your Honor, I'll make a motion for the city council to authorize the city administrator to sign change order in the amount of $82,784.80 for the completion of the site and utility work at the Wenatchee Rescue Mission for the pallet shelter facilities located at 1450 South Wenatchee Avenue, Wenatchee, Washington. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Hornby and second by Council Member Atkinson. Am I saying it that right? right? Last last time I, I kept on saying Atkins and I got Atkinson. Atkinson. Am I doing better today? Yeah, good All job. Right. Uh, for the city council to authorize the city administrator, administrator to sign change orders in the amount of $82,784.80 for the completion of the site and utility work at the Wenatchee Rescue Mission for the pallet shelter facility located at 1450 South Wenatchee Avenue, Wenatchee, Washington. Any discussion or comments? Glenn, is this going to affect the projected open date for these pallet shelters? Uh, it does technically, but the the greater um, delay for the opening is really the uh, uh, next agenda item, which is the the, the lift, uh, getting the lift station functional. Uh, so this electrical work uh, will be done, um, should be done far in advance um, of the opening. Um, it's the lift station, which is uh, the biggest delay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anything else for Glenn? Comments? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Glenn. Oh, you got the next one. I do. Well, if you recall, the uh, City Council authorized the uh, funding to do engineering design to assist the Wenatchee Rescue Commission for their sewer lift station. Um, their pump system, which hadn't really been maintained for over 40 years, has failed. Uh, they had received contributions from um, the county and from uh, nonprofits. The county contribution has been used to rewind two of the pumps. One of those uh, rewound pumps has failed, and then we're hoping the other one uh, works until we get the whole system replaced. Um, but it, imminently, it will it will fail. Um, so we are happy to, to say we have a design now from Osborne Consulting and, and Grady uh, for a new pump system. The uh, total cost is $114,037. Um, we do have a remaining balance. The Rescue Man Mission has remaining balance from the contributions of a little over 39000 So the total contribution requested from the city is seventy-four thousand uh, dollars. Just to think about uh, what is the impact of this of this two city uh, projects to the rescue mission. Uh, we have um, for the city projects we have sixty-five congregate care um, bunk bed uh, low barrier shelter uh, units there. We have thirteen to fifteen safe park units. They're all using the showers and the cooking facility and the restrooms down there. We have, uh, when it's all built with all the pallet shelters, there'll be up to 90 individuals housed there. So up to 170 individuals, plus or minus, uh, versus the 20 to 25 um, transitional units they have uh, for people who, say, have jobs that are, are working that can't get housing yet. So about 87% of the rescue mission capacity is being used by city programs, or will be. So it's really important for the success of our programs to get this system functional. Um, one of the things that the rescue mission is doing is they're looking at value engineering. They're working with a contractor to try to reduce the costs. And uh, if there is a reduction in costs, then the city two city contribution would go down um, and because they already have the funds from the county and the, non, uh, the other contributions. So, uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have, and I would recommend you consider uh, providing for that contribution. Projected date for the completion of the lift station? Yeah, that is a good question. <laughs> so the parts, the pumps themselves, uh, they say will take four to eight weeks to come. How long? Four to eight weeks. Okay. And in that time, uh, the, the contract, uh, they have a contractor picked out. It will be through the rescue mission. Um, and so, um, you know, hopefully we can get something in place in July. I'm sorry I don't have a more firm number, um, but that, that's the hope. Yeah. But definitely before fall. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Your Honor, I'll motion for City Council to authorize the financial contribution in the amount of $74,000 for the sewer lift system to be rebuilt and upgraded at 1450 South Wenatchee Avenue for the Wenatchee Rescue Mission. Second. A motion by Council Member Rodenstan and second by Council Member Hornby for City Council to authorize the financial contribution in the amount of $74,000 for the sewer lift system to be rebuilt and upgraded at 1450 South Wenatchee Avenue for the Wenatchee Rescue Mission. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Project engineer. Hello, I'm Charlotte Mitchell, project engineer. I am here today, this is for our annual pavement preservation project. Um, we had a bid opening on Tuesday. We got two bids. That's why the numbers aren't in your, in your uh, 
packets is because we just opened bids on Tuesday. We got two bids, <coughs> and uh, CWA was the low bid, and they were 3% under our engineer's estimate, so we're calling it a win, and we're hoping that we can award them the contract, or you'll authorize us to have the contract signed. Um, the streets that we're doing this year are Brown Street, Seattle Ave, Welch Ave, Maple Street, North Harrison and North Garfield, not the whole length of some of those, but segments of them. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. All of Maple Street, portion of Maple Street? Maple, it is between the Ave and uh, Princeton. So by in front of okay. Cashmere Valley Bank, Winco, the post office. And that one, we're paving at night, so we don't impact all those businesses. Excellent choice. <laughs> that's going to be the busiest street in Wenatchee. <laughs> yeah, we thought about that one. We were like, nope, that's not a daytime activity. Thank you. Yep. Your Honor, I would make a motion for the City Council to authorize the City Administrator's signature and award the contract for City Project Number 2301-2024, Pavement Pre Preservation to the Lowest Responsive Bidder. And congratulations okay. on coming under 3%. We have a motion by Council Member Huffaker and second by Council Member Ewer for the City Council to authorize the City Administrator's signature and award the contract for City Project Number 2301-2024 Pavement Preservation to the lowest responsible bidder. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Did, did you say when it's starting? I know because we're kind of like, I was just curious. I'm sorry. Oh, it should be about six six or so weeks. We've okay. got to get the contract signed and okay. get all the paperwork in all right. order. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's next? Executive session. Um, executive session to consider the acquisition of real estate by purchase when public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause a likelihood of increased price, RCW 42.30.110. And we would need a motion for that. Your Honor, I'll make a motion to meet in executive session for a time period not to exceed 15 minutes with legal counsel present to consider the acquisition of real estate by purchase when public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause a likelihood of increased price RCW 42-30.110-1B. Action is not expected to be taken following the executive session. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Huffaker and second by Council Member Hornby to meet in executive session for a time period not to exceed 15 minutes with legal counsel present to consider the acquisition of real estate by purchase when public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause a likelihood of increased price, RCW 42.30.1101B. Action is not expected to be taken following the executive session. Any discussion or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. <clears throat> Oh, I guess we're back out of uh, executive session, I was told. Um, no, just like I said, no action is, I believe, is going to be taken. So we got reports. Um, let's see. How will city council go first for reports? That'd be great. Solid Waste Committee met, uh, no new big developments. Uh, moderate Waste Facility is still doing great, even with its uh, modified hours. The transfer station up in Dryden got a bunch of very needed improvements, uh, put in a new dumping floor that was all busted up, so it's pretty stable and, yeah, doing well. And apparently, I don't know if any of you have been out to the moderate waste facility, but they have a shelf out there.
that people come in <coughs> and bring items in that they don't want anymore. Fertilizers, paint, um, huh. just all kinds of things. Some of them are brand new, never opened. And it's uh, there for people to come out and pick up if they want. Wow. Nice. Did not know. <laughs> Council member Atkinson, Hornby. Uh, I had the link meeting. Um, they're moving forward with uh, the garage to house all the electric vehicles that are on order. Um, hopefully we get a, a positive bid in the next um few weeks so we're going to have to have a special meeting to approve that contract if it comes in where we're looking it to um also a to topic that has come up again that um i'll talk to some council members about about the um makeup of the board of the, of the link where there's two county commissioners one city council member from um, both of the cities um having the conversation where we cannot change the number of commissioners on there, but we can increase the number of city representation. So it's a conversation piece that I should, we should have. Um, but other than that, i um, excited about the new electric buses that are on, on order and we can get this barn built. Top. Oh, nothing. I'm just going to go in order. So now I'll go and then you guys can go. How's that? Great. I like to change things a little bit. Uh, obviously, it was, it was public works, uh, the barbecue. I, I saw a few of the city council members there, and hopefully got to drive a, a little backhoe or do something exciting there. That was that was fun, and that was Rob Jarman's last one, and he talked a little bit about it um, uh, to continue. I think he he was trying to talk to the young people because he's been in in. Uh, public service for quite a long time he talked about a little bit about retirement and just keep plugging away and that was I think it was inspirational what he talked about obviously the um, the other thing is the reopening of the pool and I am so proud of council member Ewer uh, on your speech and council member Atkinson thank you for demonstrating a good dive for us that was cool and it is it was nice it really was and it's nice to have obviously uh, uh, other representatives there that was um, for us like uh, Senator Hawkins and Representative Steele um, and uh, recognition from the swimming head coach uh, velocity swimming coach so that was that was a great I thought that was great. We also need another code enforcement board uh, op, uh, op person. So if you can think of somebody, encourage them to be on the code enforcement board. Um, that'd be good. And that's really all I'm gonna have. Now we go. Okay. Um, pool opening was really fun. It was very cold. So kudos again. <laughs> To Charlie for jumping in the water. I hear the water was really warm, but it was not warm outside, so you were very brave. Um, but it was really nice to be there, and, and like you said, just the, the support that was there, too, was really great. It was a good crowd. Um, what else? Finance committee met, and most of the things we talked about there we heard about today, which is great. Um, there hasn't been another museum meeting yet, so I think that's all I got. Next week in June, no, excuse me, first week in June, we'll, I was invited for the interview for the police chief. So we're going to do interviews that week. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, <clears throat> AWC, the DEI committee, is having a short meeting next time. There is a forum right after that for Pride Month and um, talking about L the LGBTQ community. <clears throat> Also, um, I'm on the uh, Legislative Policy Committee, and you'll, most of us will be glad to know that the two things, at least the two things I really wanted to see on there, affordable housing and homelessness, are on that policy, and they're, we're working our way through it. We're not done yet. We have our next meeting at the annual convention. Great. Um, Laura, do you have anything? for us all right well thanks for everybody to be here the pool uh one other comment like it's minimum 10 years but we're hoping like 15 or 20 years for the it's what pool. They, they, how how long that pool is going to last us with this total done and it, yeah it, we're so we're hoping minimum's 10 years but we're hoping 15 to 17 years and by then we'll have to 
look at other things. And, and I know Dave was here earlier, but I didn't recognize Dave Erickson and all his work and his staff's work to get this. You know, he he actually was out there on a Saturday and Sunday a couple times too. So next time you see Dave, it'd be good to let him know how appreciative we are of him. So. Without anything else, we're probably paying the attorneys by minute, so let's close the meeting. Your Honor, Have I make a, a motion to adjourn. Oh. Oh, yeah, Thank you. Second. Oh, motion is second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. I forget about that.